Africa, a continent of contradictions. The history of football on the so-called Dark Continent is as checkered as its socio-political and religious past. With the arrival of the colonial powers on the continent from the 16th century, many Africans were faced with a dilemma to adapt or die. Having to adopt many of the beliefs and practices of their new masters, many Africans adopted the religious practices, especially Christianity and Islam. They spoke the language of the rulers, and they took on the sports that came with the colonizers. Football in particular, just as they were told. Or did they? Having beliefs that stretched many long years back before the arrival of the British, French or Portuguese, African people had a rich ancestral heritage and these beliefs were indelibly inscribed on their hearts and indeed still practiced, sometimes behind closed doors. If these practices are found in the game of football, do they remain hidden in the change rooms of stadiums? Or have they made their way onto the field? On the grand stage of modern football, is African spirituality considered taboo? Most often the reply I got was, oh, I'm a Christian, I don't believe in that stuff. We once uh, yeah, got a guy, a guy in, into, the, into, the, into the hotel and they, they took our boots and I was like, no, 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 I can't give my boots to you guys. They said, no, you have to give out your boots because you want to go and clean them. We played a cup, uh, cup final in Bloemfontein and a night before, we went through all the rituals. My father was a pastor. You know, and, but I can tell you really that my father believed in ancestral rituals, you know, they performed it at home. It's, it is big, but people just don't, you know, talk about it. The race for Africa between European nations began in the 16th century, with the major powers all attempting to secure the best trade routes for their various colonies around the globe. The largest and best equipped of these was the British Empire. Seeing the Suez Canal and the Cape of Good Hope as strategic trade points, they embarked on a massive campaign of African colonization. When the British arrived in force in Africa after conquering the area around Cape Town in 1806, they brought with them their politics, religion and the beautiful game. The history of soccer in Africa is inextricably linked to that of British imperialism. Uh, that doesn't mean that there weren't other sports present on the African continent before the arrival of the British, far from it. In fact, there were rich indigenous sporting traditions from Cairo to uh, the Cape. And I think it's important to keep that in mind because when the British arrive in Africa, in particularly in the late 19th century, eager to conquer, colonize, and convert, the missionaries brought the Bible and they brought footballs. To appease the new rulers of the land, Many African people outwardly took on the roles required of them by the colonizers. They publicly declared their faith in the one God and his son, and they went to church as often as was required. In the privacy of their own homes and amongst their own people, however, the traditional practices that they'd grown up with were their true religion. Amanda Tabashe is an African healer and spiritual advisor. A lot of African people, and I've seen this, um, shy away from the, from the, from the, you know, from the dust that is Africa, if I can put it that way. This is all very sanitized right now as I sit here and all quiet and civilized, you know, but this is not the way it always is. We make noise, we, you know, and there's lots of, you know, there's animal sacrifices, there's, because we go, you know, so it's not sanitized, you know, as it, as it appears. And for some people, I think they struggle with that linking back to actually what we really are. In Durban, South Africa, there is a football club called Amazulu, which is well known for the traditional beliefs marginalized in this Western view of the continent. Ayanda Lamini is a Christian and the striker for Amazulu. I think it's, it's all goes back to who you are, how you were raised, you know, because I, I don't see a point in denying yourself, you know, uh, 
who you are is just who you are, you know. Even if you can go anywhere in the, in the world, you know, you, you remain who you are. So I think the people should realize that, you know, even if I can go overseas now, play for Manchester United, a top, a top team in the world, you know, but I will still be I under the mean, you know, who was raised from uh, uh, Ulundi, you know, I have my cultural beliefs. So that's how you should, uh, like, show yourself to, to, to people, you know, the, the people around you must know you for who you are, really. I think Western views of Africans still tend to be fairly negative and often based on stereotypes. And the view of exotic Africa, uh, darkest Africa, the sort of uh, you know, heart of darkness view of Africa is still very, very popular. I arrived here, they have their own beliefs, you know, given that we are, com we are coming from, two, uh, from many different uh, backgrounds. So everyone comes here with his own beliefs, you know. So we have to respect that, uh, we have to respect each other's beliefs, you know. Uh, as the Zulus, we are not the same. I mean, we don't believe in the same thing. Like, uh, my family, if, if something, something happens to me, like something could happen to me, uh, I, I believe I have, to, I have to thank them. And if I see there's something not going okay for me, I have to talk to them, I have to ask them to give me, to give me luck. Or, or if, I, if I see maybe I'm having injuries, I, I, I have to speak to them. I have to ask them to, to, to protect me from injuries, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, but it's part of my family. In colonial days, these rituals were hidden from their European masters out of a sense of fear that they may be punished, or worse yet, they would be looked upon as savages. This remains a factor to this day. What I'm doing is looked at as something barbaric and done by people who are in, you know, dark little villages and women who, you know, who practice all kinds of, it's negative. You know, in, in all of its connotations, is negative. Although religious practices were hidden, the beautiful game began to grow roots in Africa. At the same time, however, the continent's people were being uprooted due to the need for colonial slave labor. This mafa, a Swahili word meaning holocaust, meant that African people were arbitrarily rounded up by European traders and their fellow Africans and shipped off across the seas. The people destined to be slaves took their gods and ancestors to every country they were sent to, including Brazil. Eles são partes de uma necessidade que os negros tinham de manter as suas identidades locais vivas, longe das suas terras.